Now that's minty. Have you ever wondered how mint oil goes from a farmer's field all the way into many of the products that we use every single day, such as gum, toothpaste, and even seasonally, McDonald's shamrock shakes? Hi guys, my name's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today, we are heading back out to the Lambert farm, and we are going to be checking out the distillation process, and we are going to be extracting mint oil from peppermint plants. So this is part three in a three-part series. If you guys haven't seen the previous videos to this series, I highly encourage you to go check them out now. Uh, we showed the entire process from cutting mint, harvesting it, and now we're showing the distillation process. So what do you say we head out to the Lambert farm, and Ed's gonna show us around there still. Now that we've chopped some mint, let's see what happens after it's chopped and put into the wagons. It's got a very strong, minty, pungent smell to it that burns your nostrils, but in a good way. Builds up. Well, it says water settles. Yeah. During the day, but they'll, they'll just be a constant switch over. Really? Um, no problem, but it's not much. Yeah. So we'll turn the steam on full on to get the charge of steam through the wagon. Okay. And then when the steam and min oil start going to the condenser. We'll turn it down probably to about a third of the speed okay. or the amount of um, steam because then you can't cool it. There's, okay. a, there's a level where uh, it works right. All right. Equipment. Yep. Hot. Everything's hot. So we use welding gloves. Okay. And uh, very rarely do we have a issue, but say, you gotta be safe around. You gotta remember it's hot. Oh yeah. And yeah. on a hot day, so in the middle part of the day, it gets a little steamy around here. Yeah. So now it'll take 15 minutes for the steam to come through, and then the steam and the min oil will travel over to the condensers, which are uh, tubes small tubes that run up and down inside with cold water around them so it converts the steam and min oil to water and min oil okay. when it comes out of the bottom of the condenser and it goes into those receiving cans where the min oil naturally separates and rises and that we drain it off into a barrel okay and cool. the uh, that's a simple process been doing it the world has been doing it for several thousand years. This is what the Greeks and Romans did. They yeah. boiled it in a pot and yeah. collected, the, collected the essential oil. Cool. We just are a little more efficient. Yeah. Okay, so this one just started just, just started running uh, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And you can see in the little jar here. All the oil. The min oil's rising to the top. Huh. And it'll run for an hour like that. And there will be five or six gallons of, of oil on here out of a wagon. You can see it bubbling there in the bottom. That's the mint oil. Is it rising? Wow. So that's the way, you know, that's the way it should should look. This year it's probably two-thirds of a crop just because the mint's shorter and it's right. been a tough been a tough year to grow anything yeah and uh, per wagon it's normal but there just isn't as much mint out there so everything on top here is mint oil yeah pure peppermint oil cool 
profile. Just a little, just a little yellowness to it. That's what it should have. That's the way mint oil should look. Okay. Pressure. With steam, the hotter, the steam is hotter as the pressures go up. Yeah. So you want uh, somewhere in the 50 to 75 pound area is a, a cooler, wetter steam. Yeah. Usually. If yep. you get up to 100 pounds or more, it, it's dry, but you, it has more power to get through the load, but it's hotter. So then it, you know, it, it uh, takes more energy and it uh, tends to uh, stick in the side. It, it, it gets dry in the bottom of the wagons. Weather steam, so we'll see in a minute when we dump wagons, it just slides right out. Yeah. Okay. So this is a natural gas boiler, right? Okay. When was this boiler put in? We put it in in 93, I think. It was a unit boiler out of, came out of Illinois, out of one of the universities. Oh, did it? Oh, uh, cool. It was a used boiler. Been a been a champ. It's been really good. Oh, they're a little loud, but that's the way it is. That's yeah. farming. Yep. <laughs> we recover our hot water that comes off the top of the condensers and and Put back in back in that. It's a whole lot e easier to warm up 180 degree water compared to 50 degree water. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And well water goes into the bottom for the cooling, so it's, it comes out of the ground around 55 degrees here. Okay. Farther north, the near area is probably 50 degrees. And in Texas, it's 90 degrees yeah. coming out of the ground. It's, it's interesting how water, how the groundwater works. So we'll be rotating them through throughout the day. Today, we'll do about 30 wagon loads. Yep. And each wagon sits for about an hour? In the, it runs for about an hour. Okay. After the steam comes through. Yep. And right. when it starts declining, uh, the, where it's not efficient anymore, where we're getting less oil than it costs to generate the steam, it's time to right. take them out and switch. Okay. So what do you do with all of the leftover mint? Back on the field. Back on the field. Cool. Awesome. That's a great way to recycle it, all the nutrients. There's some nutrients. And in the, the thing with peppermint, uh, not so much spearmint. We can no-till the spearmint, not plow it. But we do uh, fall plow the peppermint because it's a real shallow-rooted plant yep. and uh, you get a winter like we had last year that was open with not a lot of snow and really cold it tends to uh, kill off the rhizome so really? uh, we, we clean plow it and then of course we spread the, the mulch back on the field to keep uh, dirt from moving okay. you know, uh, you, know uh, you know how the cold winter winds don't let up well dirt blows oh, yeah. uh, we, we try to keep that to a, to a minimum okay so you guys on a mostly no-till system? Half and half. Half and half, okay. Whenever you have anything with menthol, that's peppermint. That cool, uh, they used to use a lot of menthol in cigarettes. Well, our country's a changing place. There's not as much of that, but a lot of foreign countries still use, they de-mentholize it, send the menthol crystals to, to the uh, cigarette people, the producers, and then what's left is used for flavoring that's dementhalized peppermint oil and that's okay. a different taste too. Uh, India and China still use a lot for uh, menthol. All right. Indiana has an abundance of sandy soil. As such, many farmers choose to opt for center pivot irrigation to help their crops along throughout the year. Fortunately, mint is not a plant that likes a lot of compaction. The loose sandy soil bed allows for the rhizomes to spread their roots out for the plant to grow. Yeah, definitely a lot. You can it's like it's mixed with straight organic matter is what it yeah. well this sand is productive but you got to have one of those things around yep because to make it work 10 days away from a drought with sand <laughs> i was gonna say you guys haven't had rain in two weeks and the corn is already curling up and... oh yeah but as you drop off see the lower areas that's the and those that corn will not, that won't wilt all year because the water table is so close to the top of the ground when you get in these lower areas oh, okay it's only probably three feet really? and you'll find water but six feet away here and corn roots might make it that low but it's doubtful uh, how doubtful. much fertilizer do you have to put down real year? similar to corn is it not quite as much uh nitrogen okay but other than that really similar about half but half as much nitrogen okay oh. but 
phosphate and um, potash are still really important because you got to think we're taking the tops off the field but we're spreading it back but not entirely so we are removing nutrients yep so how do weeds affect the quality of the mint oil that you take out some weeds don't affect it they don't uh, okay. grass uh, foxtails they just are a problem with the mowing and the uh, harvest unless it's really bad the water hamps lambs quarters they can be a problem because they, they the smell transfers to the mint oil okay so it'll lower the quality All a right. few weeds don't matter but a lot lowers the quality so we try to keep it i mean you could spend a fortune trying to keep it pristine oh yeah there's a there's a level where it's acceptable to have a few yep that's totally understandable it's like corn a few weeds won't affect your corn crop at all but we all know what happens when things get out of control yeah so we don't let any mineral go down the drain yep that's a redistill okay. so that takes our wastewater through and it strips out any oil that's left in the wastewater Okay. It's a little lower quality oil, but it's still mineral. Yep. And uh, that way the water we discharge is clean water. Okay. Cool. Where does the discharge, where, what do you do with the discharge water? It goes to a pond separate from any, it's just in a settling pond. Okay. So it's uh, totally disconnected yep. from the drainage system around here. Okay. Cool. And that's uh, been, you know, the acceptable way to let your uh, drain water from the mint still just Evaporate away. Okay. The min oil buyers supply barrels. Okay. Uh, 55 gallon drums, 400 pounds in min oil of min oil per barrel. Oh, well, eight or between eight and ten acres. Oh, really? Barrel. Uh, That's old oil. Pure oil. Now today's mint has all been harvested. What they'll do is mow more mint for tomorrow and then they'll have a good start to the morning and then they'll continue mowing until they have all of the mint harvested. Now mint can be harvested about once every one to one and a half months in Indiana. And it does grow back multiple times throughout the year. It's kind of like hay, except it's mint and they extract the oils out of it. Right now our blue hoodies are for sale on howfarmswork.com. If you guys are interested in one of these sweatshirts, uh, I highly encourage you to go check them out now. They are a special pre-order and they might not be available forever. So I get a lot of questions in person actually about whether I sell these sweatshirts and I wasn't for a while. Um, however, since I had so much interest in them, pretty much any, every time I see someone in public when I'm wearing this, they ask me if I could buy one. <laughs> so if you guys are interested, head over to How Farms Work. Dot com and uh, check out our store if you guys are interested in one of these sweatshirts. And that brings this video series to a close. I just want to give Ed a huge thank you for allowing us to come onto his farm and film, as well as sharing his knowledge about his mint operation and the whole distillation process. Uh, I definitely know that I learned a lot from this and I'm happy to be able to share this experience with you guys. So now I'm going to be giving away our second John Deere miniature motorized tractor. So if you guys are interested in entering this giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to How Farms Work, drop a like on this video, and then leave a comment down in the comment section telling me what you thought of this video series or if you have any suggestions for future video series or if you just have any comments in general. Um, then I'll select my winner from there. 
So anyway, uh, be sure to you, that you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All how farms work to keep up to date on what we're doing around the farm and where I might be headed next. So I just want to say thank you all for watching How Farms Work. And don't forget to check out the previous two videos in this series, Cutting Mint, as well as, as Harvesting the Plant to be Distilled. Thanks for watching How Farms Work, guys, and I'll see you next time.